This hourly segment is sponsored by Paradise Park Assisted Living and Memory Care in Fox Lake, Lake Zurich, and New Lenox. The best kept secret in senior living. Now, Jake Hartford on 890 AM. I'm a little bit crazy. 608, 8 past 6, another hour of a wait with Jake up and running. Our phone number, 591-8900. We are talking about the election uh, coming up this Tuesday. I know there's an election coming up. I saw it on all the papers. And uh, we will have the feel-good story of the day in a little bit. Also, something WS wants you to know. And whatever else uh, we can get to as we continue right here on WLS. Uh, Bob and Buffalo Grove, welcome to the show. Yeah, Jake, it's been a while since I called in. Um, with regards to the coming election, nationwide, I'm really kind of excited to see what happens on, on um, Tuesday. But locally here, I can't help but think of the song, Mrs. Robinson. Why is that? And there's a lit lyric girl stands in there that goes, sitting on the sofa on a Sunday afternoon, going to the candidate's debate, laugh about it, shout about it. When you've got to choose... Every which way you look, you lose. And with regards to our senatorial candidates here, I think it's a choice of every which way we lose. I'm just kind of dis disappointed in both candidates. All the negative ads, and nobody is really talking issues. The economy and jobs is, is really the top of the list. And really, neither one of the candidates is really providing solutions on that. All we get is just the negative finger pointing um you've embellished your resume you've got problems with your bank and uh, neither one of them are offering you know positive uh issue related um driven ca uh, campaigns see i don't even i don't even know what kirk was thinking about why he was embellishing his record yeah it's just amazing, that makes you know? that makes if he didn't do that he'd have a 10 point lead yep and then, and then Giannoulis, with regards to his bank, the bank issues and not being able to um, answer questions, um, you know, give, giving straight up answers and kind of dancing around it. Um, it's just to me, I got the final line: every which way you choose, you lose. Uh, NBA player or on the ballot statewide, Mike Labno. Uh, I'm going to say NBA. Up nope, on the ballot, Senate uh, candidate Libertarian. Libertarian. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry about that. There you go. Take Thanks, Bob. You. Take care. Yeah, there are, isn't a lot of issue uh, ads. Mm -hmm. Most of it, the only one of the few positive ads I saw was Jesse White's ad, where he talked about the fifty-one years with the Jesse White tumblers. But most of them are just negative. Uh, Scott and Decatur. Hello, Scott. Hi. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Uh, great show today. Um, was just thinking when you were talking about um, them not being smart enough to work on the health care plan after they got it passed. I think there's a lot of people missing the point on that. I'm not sure. I don't think if they're not smart enough, I think it's it's going to do the exact thing that they're trying to get it to do. It's um, the way it's designed and everything else. It sounds like 
basically they're trying to shut down the insurance companies and put us all on socialized health care. Well, if, way, if they're trying to shut down the insurance companies, they're doing a heck of a job letting the insurance companies uh, steal all the money they want right now. Or ta- I take it back. I shouldn't say steal all the money. Raise the premiums as much as they want right now. Well, yeah, but once it gets to the point where nobody can afford that insurance, I mean, they're going to do what they're doing right now, but once it gets to the point where they can't afford the insurance, then pretty much everybody's going to have to either go to the government plan or they're going to have to not have any insurance and just ride it out until whatever happens. Well, see, I don't understand. They say there's supposed to be an insurance exchange come 2014. So I would I would imagine there has to be insurance companies still around to sell it. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm not really sure if it's going if they're going to last that long. Well, I'm, I'm I just, just I'm just worried about when 2014 comes if it's so expensive you can't afford it. So now yeah. you're without insurance but you still have to pay the penalty because you don't have it. Yeah. I it the way it's looking, I don't I don't see where it's going to work out to where anybody's going to be able to afford it once it gets to that point. I can't uh, afford I can't afford it now. Plans. I can't afford well, it yeah. now. It's gone up like crazy. I was going to say, most of us can't. I said, mine's through the company, and even at that, if it starts going up, then it's not going to do me a whole lot of good. And the way the plan is written, at some point, it's, it's better off for the company to offload you and just pay whatever the uh, penalty is to the government right. than have you on their plan. Well, wasn't there something else in there that if uh, once you came off your company's plan, you automatically went into the, uh, into the government plan? Well, there isn't, there isn't no government plan per se right now. Okay. Well, I mean, that was so that's what I, down, right? and, that, and that's and to me that. and to me that's the whole problem. If your insur- if your if your company says we're not going to let you have you know we're not going to pay for your insurance anymore and you have to go out and buy it, I don't know where you're going to get it because a lot of the right. insurance companies aren't aren't selling it. If the, you know they're just waiting around. Yeah. Well, say they've already cut the plans for the cut a lot of the plans for the kids with the pre existing conditions and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's just going to get worse. Yeah. And well, thanks for I depressing me, Scott. Thanks for really depressing me and bringing me down. I try. I've, I've, we've got to, I'm hoping that everybody out there gets the hint this time around, and when we have this next election, that it gets everything, or at least gets us on the road to fixing this, because if we don't, it's going to be a big mess by the time it's all over with. Thank you, Scott. Thanks. I'm just very depressed now. Greg and Schomburg. Hello, Greg. Hey, Jake. How you doing? I'm fine. Yourself? Hey, can I interrupt this highly political conversation out of concern for you? What What is that, Greg? You know, just like a, a highly trained athlete, you know, in the final stages of his reps, you know, when and he's exerting extra effort in order to win. Mm-hmm. Is there medical assistance there as you enter this third hour to assist you just in case, you know, the ex- extra exertion causes you stress? And I thought you were my friend, Greg. No, no, we're you're, concerned you're turning about it, You're Jake. turning on me now. No, not at all. Scott depresses me with the with the, finan- not, uh, the financial outlook of health care, and now you come right back. It's like a one-two punch. Jake, we're just concerned. You guys are tag team. You're us. tag-teaming me. All right, okay, well, you obviously have plenty of strength left here. <laughs> hey, just real quick. Yes. When you look at where we were two years ago and where you look where we are now, man, what a country. I mean, you know, to be able to at least, I agree with the last caller, or two callers ago, where the the precision of the debate has not necessarily been extraordinary in terms of uh, identifying action plans. But at least we've got a country where, you know, you can coalesce and you can change things around. My personal point of view is the mechanism by which we make government is flawed in the there needs to be a better way of handling the communication process, and that'll evolve. But the thing that I think you need to celebrate on this is look at what happened in two years by a few people, primarily starting with that guy on uh, that Rick guy who had that fit, and then Michelle Bachman. Now you know he there there he's not the one. There are three people that I would give credit for this. Three people. Go for it. Uh, the first dude, Barack Obama. Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid, because that, they, they had the ten ears and they wouldn't listen to the American people. Yep, that is true. They that blew is. it they, two years ago. Two years ago, the numbers they had in Congress, the popularity with the people, they can do anything they wanted to do. Well, they did with the health care, but when the people said, "You know what? We don't like the plan you're proposing. Change it," they didn't listen. And they have themselves to blame. Whatever comes Wednesday morning, when they start looking around at what's left over, they have themselves to blame. 
That's they, who they blame. Not the Tea Party people, not Sintelli, nobody. They didn't listen, and they lied. Everything that they said they were going to do in terms of transparency, the basic respect for America, they just set up yours, and they did what they wanted, and that's why they're getting what they're getting. Go back and read the stories of that week, how the Republicans were dead for going to be a decade. They were a generation. They were, they were, and some people were saying, no, the Repo Republican Party is dead forever in yeah. two years. Yeah. And again, those three people. Just hope the Republicans don't screw it up this time. No, that's what I'm afraid of. I agree. See, they're not, they're not all angels either. <laughs> no. Well, anyway, hey, it's uh, under the circumstances, it's a shame that you're getting a third hour, but, uh, you know, a third hour from Jake is always like uh, heaven. Well, well, the first hour was the pre show, so that doesn't really count. Okay, good. Bye bye, Greg. See ya. Uh, Bob and Palatine. Hello, Bob. Hi, Jake. Good morning. How are you doing? All right. Jake, talk about um, Obamacare. I have recently been diagnosed with lung cancer, and I've just learned that they are going to drastically reduce the amount of dollars, if you're over 65, which I am, for like chemotherapy treatments and such as that. And they're saying, well, because... In most cases, the lung cancer brought on by smoking, you know, they say, well, it's self-induced. Well, I didn't smoke, Jake, to get lung cancer. But, you know, here I am. I'm brand new into the chemo now, and I'm very concerned about that. I, I, I can't believe it. Well, here, let, let me just, let me tell you this. Try not to focus on the financial aspect. And I know you have to, but... Don't let that get you down. You got to stay with a positive attitude with the chemo, Bob. Oh, absolutely. But I, I'm, I, you know what? I don't even care about myself. I've got great insurance. I have Medicare, of course. I'm retired. I have a wonderful policy, a supplemental with my company. My company. I know what's going to happen. They're going to drop our our insurance. And they want us to go into the Obamacare. I don't know. It's very very scary. Well, just just keep focused on going through the chemo and keep keep the spirits up, okay, Bob? I will, Guy. Bye-bye. Right. We will get back to more of your calls. We do have an uplifting story of the day to get to. We also have sports. We're going to hear from Dr. Bob. You know, we almost need that fourth hour today. We should have done a two-hour pre-show. I, I knew we put too much stuff in the pre-show. You guys, you guys were voting on what we should do. We put too much in. 618 back after this.